Now, they're sitting here. They didn't get Mitchell. They have 11 first-round picks over the next seven years. You know, Fournier, Randall, those guys were also in trade talks this this past offseason or this current offseason. Is there another move that, uh, you know, could be down the pipeline? You know, fans are looking at uh, uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander from the Thunder. You, you're hearing OG Ananobi. You know, is that more fan pipe dreams or, or is there legitimate interest in, in these guys? Well, I think that anytime you're going to, you hear about a star that's going to maybe be on the block, the Knicks will be interested to a degree just because of where they are in the team building process. Um, the, they're built in a way to go ahead and, and strike when those opportunities present themselves, which I think leads to more questions about the Donovan Mitchell situation. But uh, let's say something happens and, you know, Andrew Wiggins, it seems like he and Golden State aren't going to come to a long-term agreement or things go haywire Minnesota, Carl Towns becomes available, Shea Gilders Alexander, that's a situation that the, the league is keeping an eye on because of Oklahoma City's direction. The Knicks are going to be interested and, and I, they'll have the assets to get involved in the conversations. But to me, CP, I, and I think that you, you, you feel this way too, but correct me if I'm wrong, the, the, the risk in waiting is is that situation, whatever it is, because there's going to be another situation, there's going to be a disgruntled star, yeah. is that situation more advantageous than the Mitchell situation was? Uh, and does it put you in better position to build this thing out and to build out your team into a perennial contender than that Mitchell acquisition, acquisition would have? That's the question right. to me when you talk about the next move. We obviously don't know the answer, but to me that's that's the framing by which I would look at it. Well, I think no. whenever you have like the potential movement that you have right now in the league, and you're looking at like the Russell Westbrook situation in particular, but you know, there's other uh, teams that are still kind of in flux. I think there's always going to be the chance of something happening, but I put it, uh, I, I think they're, they're less likely to do something of significance at this point um, because we're so close to training camp. Now, I, you know, I think with Evan Fournier, you know, his name was, was out there in a significant way in those trade talks. And I know that there had been concerns among some in the organization about he and Jalen Brunson defensively in the same backcourt. So, you know, maybe something shakes there. But, I, you know, people talk about Julius Randle and, you know, he's kind of that lightning rod in terms of is he going to get traded and is Obi Toppin going to get more minutes? You know, I think if the Knicks were just going to go that route, they could have done it before the Donovan Mitchell trade. And I understand maybe you want to see what happens with Mitchell before you make that kind of decision. But, but the idea that, you know, he wasn't out there in a big way pre Donovan Mitchell, I'd be a little bit surprised if they then pulled the trigger and, and did a deal for Randall where you're essentially uh, trading Randall at one of his lowest points of value. Um, and I don't know what you take back, but I can't see them just dumping him at this point. And also, yeah. I've said it before, I think it's still a case, like wherever he ends up, he'll be involved in the process. They're not going to blindside him and send him somewhere where he doesn't want to go because of his relationship uh, with those up high in the organization, including Leon Rose and William Wesley. 